as enterprise push generative AI into production, they are hitting a wall, not just in compute and cost, but in connectivity, control, and compliance. Developers want flexibility to innovate, while enterprises need security, governance, visibility, and more control. And Tetrate is positioning itself to solve that tension. In today's enterprise landscape, generative AI is no longer an experiment. It's entering production. But running AI at a scale creates a new kind of challenge. How do you give developers the freedom they need to innovate while still maintaining governance, security, and operational control. Tetrate, as we all know, is known for its service mesh expertise. And now the company is evolving to meet this moment driven by GenAI. They are announcing a new Tetrate agent route service, which is going to help organizations streamline AI connectivity while reducing lock-in and cost overruns. Joining me today is again David Wang, head of product at Tetrate, to talk about the technology behind this shift, the developer pain point that they are addressing, and why governance and control are more important today than ever in the AI native, cloud native architectures. David, it's great to have you back on the show. It's great to be here, Sab. No, thank you for the invitation. It's my pleasure. And these days, uh, almost every conversation that I have here at TFI is around AI as expected. Let's quickly talk about this evolution we are looking at from Tetris perspective, from service mesh all the way to helping AI workloads. Yeah, no, great question. So I would say that, you know, there's like many companies, there's a great deal of pool that got us here in the first place. So Tetris started out as a company that's very focused on secure connectivity, zero trust in Kubernetes workloads. Uh, for microservices, really. And our customers um, primarily are uh, folks in the regulated industries with regulated workloads, uh, a lot of financial services, big banks. And they use the Tetrate product to secure connectivity uh, and guarantee compliance. Uh, the one thing that has happened as uh, folks experiment adopt with AI is the, the natural question they have is, well, Tetris is helping us with all our regulated workloads to secure them. And now I have these inference workloads, whether it's taking place on premises or in the cloud. And they are just as risk risky and need to be regulated as my microservices. So what, what can Tetris do about it? Um, so that's that's like the origin. And as it happens, you know, Tetris is well positioned to solve that problem. Uh, and really because fundamentally our the Tetris, the company, uh, is based around three three things that translates extremely well um, to from microservices to AI. One is that the basis of every tech, everything technology Tetrate does is Envoy. Um, you know, Tetrate is the Envoy or the driving force behind the Envoy project. So we have a lot of expertise in making Envoy do the things it needs to do to protect workloads, no matter where it is, no matter what's the traffic. Um, so AI is a natural extension. And secondly, we are very accustomed to working with uh, enterprise requirements. A lot of our customers are, as I said, in the regulated industries. Um, so we're very comfortable with deploying and solving enter specific enterprise requirements. And AI certainly falls into that category. And the last thing which uh, people often forget is that Tetra started out doing a ton of standards work with NIST and the US government. And uh, now we have actually are still doing um, security-oriented work. Uh, we recently, there was recently an API security uh, SP we published with NIST. Uh, we have been working with Finos on AI governance standards, and there'll be more of that. So between the open source connection, the enterprise DNA, and the governance work, um, they all just lend our, our product and our company naturally from securing microservices to securing AI workloads. And as you are focusing on AI, can you talk about what are the building blocks, what are the blocks that you have started to build for enterprises? Our core premise around AI connectivity is to provide trusted AI connectivity to make AI adoption safe, fast, and profitable. And the technology around it is to help people, is, is still Envoy to help people really understand what is going on in real time uh, as they uh, work with AI workloads. The Specifically though, however, 
Uh, within Envoy, it is Envoy AI Gateway. Um, and Envoy AI Gateway is a collaboration we started with Bloomberg, I would say about a year back, maybe a little bit more. And we've been working closely to uh, sort of take it into production. And it's it's been going well, and we've learned a lot. And uh, our uh, the two products uh, that we have, the along with the, the new one, Tetrate Agent Router Service, uh, it's basically a, a managed um, and uh, feature-rich version of Envoy AI Gateway to help developers be more productive, get the most out of their day-to-day -day if they're working on AI projects. When developers bring AI into production environments, what are the biggest roadblocks that they hit? Are there things like lock-in, model instability, cost overruns, or there are other such issues as well? What are you seeing in this space? There are many, uh, probably way too many for the comfort of the developers, but a couple of things. One is just uh, just usability in terms of the number of models they can choose from, therefore the number of endpoints and the number of keys they have to manage uh, right off the bat. And you know, it may seem like a small thing, you maybe would overcome it in a prototyping phase, but once you deploy it to production, uh, how do you keep up with changes? Like, you know, people don't really want to touch production apps. This is something people who don't work in big enterprises don't fully grasp. It's like how hard it is to make a change to an app in production, especially if it's revenue generating. So choices people make early on in prototyping may directly affect the lifetime cost of maintenance of an application because it's hard to change. So, you know, the first problem we tackle is just the, the convenience of having a single access point uh, and key management uh, for the developers. And then onwards, once you're in deployment, there are many operational problems. The first is just around reliability. You know, I think um, the speed of innovation here means new things come out every day. Uh, but I think the flip side of that is not everything works reliably. Sometimes you kind of scratch your head as to how could something as widely used be not as reliable as you want. Um, so fallback around models is important. And then lastly, just some visibility into what's actually happening at the transaction level when you use models, whether it's for the purposes of troubleshooting or the purposes of cost cost management at the developer level. So for developers, it's about convenience and visibility. Um, and agent router service provides both in a fairly managed fashion using the latest open source technology without incurring infrastructure uh, burden on the developers because it is a Tetra managed service. But if I were to zoom out to answer your question on the big, big picture, you know, what is the developer solving for? I think at the enterprise level, it's about balancing, you know, the the requirement to innovate fast with AI and the risk of moving too fast. Um, that is the fundamental thing I think Tetra solves. Not dissimilar to how Tetra is uh, used to solve this type of problem with microservices and cloud adoption. How do you move fast safely? I think AI is sort of a similar technology adoption problem with just added complexity of cost and additional new flavors of risk, perhaps. As we discussed, you just launched the Tetrate Agent Daughter service. What exactly does this new managed solution do? And how does it help developers and organizations strike a balance between agility, flexibility, innovation, at the same time, control? I would say the overall arching philosophy here is uh, agent router service makes the easiest thing also the safe thing to do for developers. So typically the conflict comes in when developers are forced to do something that's really hard, that is compliant, but then you know it's hard, so they kind of try to get around it or they forget to do it. Uh, router service is built around developer experience. It's meant to make developers' life easy. It is a managed endpoint. You, it's a few clicks to get that endpoint. We provide the keys uh, for you, or you can bring your own key. It doesn't matter. but it's very quick to get started. And once you put that endpoint in your code, you can start to use many models right away. Uh, you can have observa observability into your transactions. You can manage how you load balance across your models. There is even like a playground for you to experiment with prompts and, uh, um, and the like before you actually put something into production. So this is all part of agent router service and it just makes the developer's life a lot easier. So there's acceleration for them. So there's no reason why they wouldn't opt into something like that. On the flip side of it, you know, agent router service also solves a lot of the perennial problems with fast startup driven products, like in the sense that this is built on a proven architecture, Envoy. It's being used by, you know, internet scale companies and it's been proven in Tetra's other products in regulated industries. 
And beyond that, um, just uh, it creates this single point of control because the developers find it convenient, they opt into it. Agent router service is a natural um, point of control for enterprises who wants to leverage that consumption into governance because agent router service works seamlessly with our other product, which is agent operations director. So uh, the two products can work in tandem. The developers who are trying to drive innovation can get acceleration through the router service. And then the people who wants to govern risk and cost can get visibility through operations director. Um, that makes for a very good complementary uh, sort of like product suite. And uh, that's how, you know, uh, you can balance innovation and risk, in my opinion. And a lot of the stuff, even though it's a managed service, we understand most enterprises, once they move to production scale, will want things on their premises or in an isolated execution environment. So those concerns are baked into agent router service from day one, even though the starting point for a developer might be very turnkey, very easy, very, very slick. Um, it's built ready to be moved, you know, with an on-prem data, data playing and, you know, like a centralized managed, uh, managed, uh, governed sort of like operating model. Let's talk about some of the use cases because I am always excited about how people are using a specific technology. What are some of the generative AI scenarios or patterns where you are seeing this new service is going to have a direct impact on developers' lives? So, I mean, the, the most obvious one, probably the super impactful one is just the coding assistance. Uh, you know, there's been so many reports of productivity gains and the promises of coding assistance. It's actually kind of panning out. So the first use case is just coding assistance. Um, and here, you know, like the loss of uh, model reliability and visibility and cost management is extremely important because, uh, I mean, I personally experienced the difference in quality and difference in reliability of different models. And for me, I think, you know, being able to control that, put, put that in my own hands to control is, is, is really important. And the second category are sort of AI powered applications or microservices. And here's where you embed large language models externally or internally in order to make your customer or employee experiences a little bit smarter, a little bit better. And the challenge there the developers have is, you know, if they're revenue generating, if they're business critical, like these, this like LM connection, this AI connect connectivity cannot be the weak link. So how do they guarantee that? And moreover, how do you actually make sure that this experimental or, um, you know, project deploys into production is actually ROI positive for the company. You know, how do you know you're not spending hundreds and thousands and, you know, tens of thousands of dollars just to handle people saying hi to your model? So like, you know, these are the things that uh, you need some infrastructure for. So that's the second use case, chat, you know, uh, LLM powered applications. And the last category, I think is it's somewhat nascent, but it feels like it's getting, getting a lot of traction. Momentum is building fully autonomous agents. You know, people want to build agents that can interact with internal, external data systems, take action without, you know, human intervention, and maybe even agents in a swarm working with each other. And all these things are, uh, that needs to be somehow centralized in terms of management, in terms of governance um, that's emerging. So the third gallery in terms of building agents is to, uh, is, is emerging, but very exciting for us as well. As we all know, we have covered in the past, and you also mentioned earlier in this interview that you folks were closely with NIST. You do a lot of work in zero trust, service mesh standards. Does that work? Does that collaboration influence this new announcement, which is more about supporting security and governance, especially for regulated industries? Yeah, absolutely. It, it does, and it's because, you know, for us, I think... Uh, People, you know, I, I sort of like to try to translate, uh, break the trade off between innovation and risk by making like the, the, the easy thing, the safe thing, right? So, so therefore, what, how do you define what is a safe thing is very important. And right now in AI, that is actually a very nebulous concept. Like a lot of people lift and shift some threat models we've known from the microsecurity era, but, um, truly AI is a different beast and everybody's trying to sort of find their, their footing. So we are happy to work with NIST and Finos to explain, to sort of like work on governance frames, like define what, what does safe mean? What are the different dimensions of that? And more importantly, the blueprints around how you can make something safe. So even as we, and historically, you know, we've done that for microservices in various uh, SPs, and that's, that becomes sort of like embodied in our product in the form of like our service mesh product. In AI, it's exactly the same thing. We work with these governing bodies um, to understand what is the right definition of safe, taking 
uh, account into customers, government entities, you know, organizations that may be interested in this. And then we build that definition of safe into our products. In the case of agent router service, you know, it is very productivity oriented, but the observability it provides is meant to facilitate people to get a measure of whether or not they meet the safe goals. And certainly operations director, whose job is really meant to help somebody centrally govern and manage risk and ROI of AI connectivity, uh, it is it has guardrails that's just built in based on these uh, uh, frameworks that we uh, work within and are a part of. So therefore, a lot of this, you know, Tetra works to understand and shape what safe means and whatever that is, it is it comes with the product. So uh, the product comes is ready, ready, enterprise ready to be used, ready, ready to be trusted. And not only that, it does so in a way that's easy. So you don't have to worry about the trade off between whether or not to make something safe or make something used. You can have both. Can you talk about how do you see AI governance will evolve? I'm not talking at five years, I'm looking at two to five months from now. And how is the trade planning to stay ahead and more competitive, not only just in the service mesh space, but also in the AI space, as more and more organizations are scaling out Gen AI across multi-cloud and hybrid cloud environments? As an approach, I would say, Definitely the AI space, it's very, very nascent. So there, there are a lot of uh, Venn diagrams of what's def defined as safe happening. So our plan first is one like near short, medium term thing is to help everybody come up, come up with a somewhat standard definition of what safe means. And it's like a Rosetta Stone of safe, which so very proud of the work we've done on Finos because we did a lot of that, which is how does a NIST standard map to a Finos thing like they have similar words and diff but different numbers. So like a like a like a Rosetta Stone that helps that just on the standards level. Um, the one thing I feel like I also see right now is it might be a while before people settle into a true global standard of safe. Um, just by the nature of people's different business and just the, the number of different frameworks out there. So for me, I think the answer for Tetra extensibility is a very important factor. Um, you know. Our again, our core competency is Envoy on uh, this proven platform, and Envoy is very extensible. Our products, Tetri products, are very extensible. So when it comes to guardrails and the ways to keep AI connectivity trusted and safe, our medium term, maybe I mean, who knows what's going to hold like long term for AI, but medium term is definitely you know make it easy for our users to customize how they want to keep things safe. I think that is a very important factor just because I think in the short term, there's not gonna be one size fit all for when it comes to safeguarding AI. David, thank you so much for uh, breaking it down as more enterprises push AI workloads into production. It's clear that the real differentiator won't just be the model, but the infrastructure connectivity and governance behind it. Thank you so much for sharing all these insights with us. And I look forward to chatting with you again. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. Looking forward to next time. And for those watching, stay tuned for more enterprise-focused conversations on how platform teams are enabling secure, scalable AI from the ground up. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell. See you in the next video. Bye for now.